Hi, and welcome back. First of all, I must apologise for the lack of videos over the last two and a half months or so. It's been summer here in New Zealand, and I do a lot of sea fishing during the summer months. So this year, I've been, the fishing's been particularly good, so I've been out there uh, more than sort of normal. But anyway, I have been active in the shop. I've been um, doing some paid work, which obviously I can't video because I'm on the time clock for that. But now uh, summer's coming to an end, I can get back to starting to, you know, do more videos and doing some of the projects what I want to do. So anyway, what we'll do, we'll get the engine on the bench and I'll show you, um, you know, the finished result and we'll get that running. I've just got the engine just mounted on a piece of timber at the moment. Um, just while I mess around with timing and getting the engine run in. I don't know how I'm going to finish it yet. Some people have them mounted on boxes and some people just have them mounted on wooden bearers, which is uh, how they would have been traditionally done. But I don't know. Um, the, the ideal thing with the box is that all the electronics are hidden inside that box, whereas really I want to try and hide those underneath the engine and just have the wooden bearers on show. But I don't know yet. It all depends whether I can fit that in. But anyway, if we look at the engine and the electronics side of it, so what we've got is um, we've got a generator box here which runs from just AA batteries and that generates a high voltage um, signal which obviously goes off to the spark plug. And the spark is um, controlled by a magnet which just moves around on this um, disc here and then there's a Hall, ascent, Hall effect sensor down here. So every time the magnet comes around near the Hall effect it then fires and then obviously generates a spark. So with the electronic ignition, um, I just imported this from China. Uh, that was the cheapest alternative for me, because to buy something like this in um, New Zealand probably cost you double the you know the price, and it works really well. Um, some people have been running these on three batteries, and some have been running just on two. So the engine's running really well on two, which will make it easier. Um, if I can get this battery pack as small as possible, then it's going to make it easier just to hide that underneath the engine once I you know, decide on what I'm going to do with finishing that. And then just the fuel tank, at the moment I've just got one of those hobby spray bottle things um, just connected up just to run it. I've decided to run on petrol, so this is just normal unleaded petrol. It will also run on um, Coleman's fuel as well. Uh, I did buy some Coleman's fuel. But the petrol seems to run, at the moment, it's running better on petrol. Whether it would be easier to run on Coleman's later on once the engine's running, because the engine is a bit tight at the moment, but it does seem to run okay on petrol, so I might even stay with that. Right, the engine's all fueled up, so what we'll do, we'll try and start it. So we'll turn the ignition system on. We'll just put a finger over the carburetor and just prime it to get some fuel into the engine. And then we'll try and get that start. You can hear it firing. And we're away. I'll just lean it out a bit and the engine will start to pick up speed and um, like I was saying at the moment the engine's still running in so all the mechanism for the governor is still quite stiff at the moment. The gears are quite tight as well so they're a bit noisy until it starts to run in.
So like I was saying, the engine is still pretty tight at the moment. So all the all the mechanism through here, the exhaust mechanism, and coming down to where the governor's controlled, it's all pretty stiff. Uh, once it's been running for a while, obviously that will start to loosen up. Because I'm having problems with the uh, governor weights here. I've, instead of using the springs which I made from the plans, they're, at the moment they're not working. So I've just got another spring here, just out of a collection of springs I've got. And that seems to be um, working at the moment okay, not too bad. But I say once the engine starts to loosen up, then I'll have to start having a look at these springs and messing around with different springs to get the governor to work correctly. Because at the moment that's not really working. Because um, I want the engine to run at a slower speed. But anyway, that I'll have to mess around with those at a later date. Well, that's the Kurzel engine all finished, other than the base, what it's going to sit on. It's been a uh, really enjoyable build. I really enjoyed it. Um, quite taxing at times. Um, you know, some of those parts are sort of quite hard to make. Uh, you've got to put some thought into um, work holding and things like that because you're working on, you know, such a small part, especially like things like the valves. I mean, they were tiny. Um, you know, and trying to get those square when they're finished, you know, so the trouble is, you see, if, you, if you've got an engine and you've got a wonky valve, you're never going to get it to seat properly, regardless of how well you grind it. It's always going to leak. And leaky valves just don't work, especially on a small engine. You want a real good compression and a good valve seat seal. So things like that, you know, because once you, when you're working on something so small and you're trying to hold it in the lathe or hold it in the middle machine, it does, uh, you have to put some thought into it. So I wouldn't recommend the engine for a beginner, definitely not. Uh, for an intermediate person, really, you want to be, um, you want to know your way around the mill machine and around the lathe. It's no good just buying the machines and think, oh, I'm going to make one of them, because that's definitely not easy. Start off with something simple like a steam engine, wobbler engine or something like that, and then progress, you know, to a more difficult engine. Because... The skill base, what you need as you get into the more complex engines, definitely climbs pretty quick. Um, you know, if you if you if you went from that to like a traction engine or something like that, you know, there's a hell of a lot of parts in a traction engine, and um, quite a lot of that is quite sort of skillful. You know, and things like um, once they start getting into proper little engines, then you might have seen some of the miniature. Uh, V10s and V8 engines, what uh, um, some people build. I mean, that's, that's just a hell of a lot of work and a hell of a lot of skill. Um, so, yeah, so an in intermediate person, yeah, ideal. But it will still tax you, you know. it's It's been really good. And um, But there again, you see, you've got to tax yourself. You've got to put yourself under that pressure. Otherwise, you're not going to learn and you're not going to progress. I mean, it's anybody, well, not anybody, but... You know, it's easy just to turn shafts for people, um, you know, turn something down to fit in something. That's, that's easy. But once you actually start making something like an engine where everything is critical, um, that's, you know, that's where a skill comes in. And um, that, that is really good. And it, it does progress your skills pretty quick. <laughs> so anyway, so thanks a lot for watching. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing next uh, engine wise. I will build another engine, but... I've got so many other projects on the, you know, on the horizon which I want to mess around with. Um, I think I'm going to tackle some of those and then I'll move on to another engine down the track. So anyway, so thanks for watching this series. Um, that is going to be on a playlist on YouTube so you can watch the whole series in one go. And thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.